Coffee Class, it's Brian again. I wanted to take this video to go to Module 1 and show you some of the StatCrunch tools that are going to be really useful for some, some of these basic uh, calculations of uh, descriptive statistics. Uh, so I'm going to start with problem number 3. Uh, we're given a frequency table and we're asked to calculate the relative frequencies. Now the, the calculation is pretty quick to do. We just have to calculate how many, you know, count how many patients there were in total and divide each number by the total. But um, for the sake of example, I'm going to do that in StatCrunch to avoid doing any calculations by hand, <laughs> um, which can be useful if there's, you know, a huge amount of data. So here's the way you can do this here. Um, when you have your our data, we have our, our categories in the first column and the, the counts in the second. We're going to graph a bar plot with um, from summary data, not from from summary, not from data. So with summary, and we put the category. The categories are in are the age and the counts are in patients. So you can see the 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 age the age uh, column is just those categories and the, the, the counts are in that one. What I want to do is a relative frequency. Um, I'm going to do relative frequency within category and I'm going to click this. I want to have the value above the bar. Uh, what um, value by ascending um, worksheet order. We want to do it in the worksheet order but you see that the worksheet order is the order we want them in. Here's the order 5 to 19, 20 to 34, 35 to 49. So we have to make sure that it's in the right order. I could have done it manually, but this is the these little things to watch out for. 232, 323. Three, four, five. Okay. And let's just see what I, oh, <laughs> what does the hist frequency histogram look like? Well, you know, we just created that, so we can actually copy it right from there. See? Okay, that's easy. Um, oh, oh, we don't want to leave it. There's more, more to the problem. Hmm, the relative fr frequency histogram. Um, the frequency histogram, the relative frequency histograms are going to have the exact same shape, and so um, the, yeah, it looks like it's going to, so 34%, let's just can look at this one. I think this one looks right, but um, 0.34, 23, this looks good. This one over here. Um, everything looks too low. You can see that's about 20, that's about 0.24, that's too low. But the highest bar should be at 0.34, so that's what we want. Okay, that's good. What percentage of patients were born were between 35 and 49? So 35 to 49 in percentage, well that's, it's staring us right here, it's 32.3%. Percentage were 34 or younger. 34 or younger, we'd need to add those two. Um, let's, uh, we may have a calculator like this. I'm going to pull up my calculator. Pulling up the calculator. All right, let's just add this up 10.1 plus 23.2, 33.3. So let's see. Um, that's easy. Okay, this is good. So we want to calculate mean, median, and mode for this set of data. So I'm going to show you how to do that easily in StatCrunch. So remember, whenever you see this little icon, it means that you can click there and you can copy the table directly to StatCrunch, and then you can do some calculations. Um, so you have a column of data under the Stat menu under 
enter summary stats. We want to do summary stats for the column. Select your column, and it's going to have a lot of summary stats already selected. Um, these are good uh, for now. We just want the mean, median, and mode. Actually, the mode is down here at the bottom. So I'm going to control click to add that to the list. So now all of those are selected. Um, OK, that's all. Hit compute, and it'll give it to you. Uh, so we've got mean. Let's extend this so we can see everything. Mean, I'll just copy it to nearest cent. So that's 41.41. Median, medians over here. And the mode is, there is no mode. It says the mode is not no unique mode. OK. Excellent. Um, OK, good. Here's another good one. We have a sampling of 15 individuals. We want to look at what a frequency histogram would look like. So let's open this data in StatCrunch and create a histogram. OK, so you'll have a column of data, and we're going to go under uh, Graph. This is where you can create a histogram. We just have to choose the that var as our column. And um, we want to do a frequency histogram, not a relative frequency histogram. So the width of each, uh, let's, let's just go with the default options and see what this looks like. Um, but actually, let's see, this is from 0 to 5, 5 to 10. Looks like we start the bars at 0, and we have them with a width of 5. So let's let's do that, actually. Start it at 0 and have a width of 5. And that way, we can be sure our histogram is going to look like these do. OK, so this is great. This is what our picture is. And here's the homework problem. OK, so we can compare and see what which one it looks the same. This one definitely looks the same. Let's just look at it up close. What do you think? Pretty similar. <laughs> OK, cool. Uh, so that's it. OK, is it skewed to the left, skewed to the right, or symmetric? Whenever you have a tail pulling it off to the right, um, like the, the median looks like it's around here, but the it, it's pulled over to the right. Um, we would say it's skewed to the right. Wherever this, this thing is pulled out further in the direction of, that's where the skew is. Um, in fact, if you want to, um, from here, summary stats, uh, you can actually add the skew to the summary stats. And um, the skewness, it is going to measure, oh, sorry, I could say select the data and the skewness value is going to be positive or negative based on whether the skew is to the right or to the left. So a positive skew means it's skewed to the right. Negative skew is skewed to the left. So you can use that actually as a numerical measurement of skewness rather than a visual measurement of skew skewness. Um, the mean number of hours uh, is approximately, well, let's just get, we calculated the mean right here. It's 13.13. So we want an um, the mean number of hours is approximately 13 or decimal to three decimal places as needed. Let's that one, three, three, 13 point one, three, three, the median. Okay. So we've got the median right here. It's 12. Alrighty. And which is better describes it. So the idea is because the, there is a, the, because the data is skewed, the median would be a better measurement of the center than the mean because those outliers or those extreme values, I should say, they, they affect the, uh, the mean, but they're not going to have an effect on the median. So the median is resilient against extreme values. So whenever you've, you've concluded that the data is skewed, then that leads you to a to prefer the median instead of the mean. Okay, 
Now here we're looking for range and sample standard deviation. So again, we can, we can do that stuff in StatCrunch. I definitely recommend doing standard deviation calculation in StatCrunch rather than by hand. It's very uh, tedious to do this calculation by hand. Uh, so, uh, but again, this is, this is all easily done using the summary stats. Um, and the, the range and the range and the standard deviation are selected by default. So just select this bar and compute. And we'll get the range of 1130 and the standard deviation is right here. So range, let's go copy that over. And the stand sample standard deviation to one decimal place is going to be 464.29. So I'm going to I'm going to write I'm going to copy just 464 and round it up to 464.3. Okay, looks good. Uh, once again, range and sample standard deviation, same thing. Okay, here we're going to compare two two. Uh, data sets but again this is this is very easy to do in StatCrunch we want to look at um, we're going to con compare the range and the standard deviation of these two uh, samples so when you're doing the summary stats you can just select multiple columns and it'll create all of your summary stats just listed for you one by one so you just have to select both of those hold down control and click both of them city A city B and again, remember, range and standard deviation are already selected. I could, I could take out the other ones if I wanted to, but there's no harm in keeping them all in there. There's other good stuff there that you might use at some point in your life. Um, the mode, like I've said, is there. The IQR is actually another useful um, measurement of spread, but we haven't really studied it. Um, let's include that just for fun. <laughs> About as fun as it can be to do stuff like this. So, um, uh, okay, so here we go. So city A, we have the, the range, standard deviation. So let's um, uh, just copy it over. We've got a range of 0.5 for city A. That's exactly what it's asking for. The range for city B is two. Standard deviation for city A, right here, nearest cent. So that's 0.22. standard deviation for city B. You can see that this is, <laughs> there's no need to, to kill yourself with all this calculation. You should feel comfortable using software to do it. Okay, based on range, city B has more, has the higher range. The higher the range, the more dispersion. And based on standard deviation, you can see, based on standard deviation, also city B has a higher. So city B has a higher standard deviation. And that's it. Um, okay, so those are all the tools that are useful for module one. Um, I'll continue with module two and we'll look at some other stuff. But um, that's it for now. All right, bye.